What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be showing off a new tech card that I've been loving recently and funny enough it works super super well in Crusadia. Now this card right here 7th Ascension just came out in the new legendary Duelist Duelist of the Deep. This set has been out for maybe I think like a month or so. It's still very relatively new and this card makes Crusadia insanely busted. So in today's video I'm going to be showing off a Crusadia deck profile featuring this new card and how you can abuse this new card in Crusadia. But if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We're on the road to 7,000. I appreciate everyone who's joined the Spanko squad recently, but also keep in mind that I upload five days a week. Mondays are deck profiles, Tuesdays are combo videos. So in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be showing off what this card and what this deck can do. So I hope you guys enjoy. And with that, let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so just before we get started with today's profile, I do want to say that this is the card that we're going to be focusing on. And this is a card that I want to talk about first. So 7th Ascension is a new spell card that just recently came out in Legendary duelist and this card is insanely insanely powerful i'm going to read it out to you guys then once i go through the deck profile you guys are going to see how well this card synergizes with crusadia now i know this is more of like a techie thing but i think it's really really cool and i think the idea and the concept behind it is really really cool so i think we need to address that because once we do then in the future we can start putting this tech into different decks but in crusadia specifically it just works so well so seventh ascension reads take one card from your deck either a barian spell or trap or a rank up magic quick play spell or a seventh spell or trap card except seventh ascension and either add it to your hand or place it on top of your deck. If your opponent controls a monster special summon from the extra deck, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send one rank up magic spell from your hand to the graveyard. This effect becomes that spell's effect when it's activated. And then you can only just use one of them per turn. So this card is insane because it gives you access to a card like rank up magic, the seventh one. Now the seventh one's an insane card. However, the problem with it is to activate this card, you must draw it for your normal draw in your draw phase. Now the beautiful part about seventh ascension is that it bypasses that completely and it gives you access to one of the most broken cards in the extra deck and that is number c104 umbral horror masquerade now this is kind of where the combo comes in together because c104 does a multitude of things for you first thing it does for you is just a monster negate right you can detach and monster negate but when you do monster negate you can half your opponent's life points and then discard a card from their hand now why this is so good in crusadia is because you can imagine in an otk deck when you half your opponent's life points you can pretty much otk every time so seventh ascension is the main component of this deck so i'm going to get into the deck profile and then talk a little bit more about why seventh ascension synergizes so well but of course this card is just so so nuts and it always gives you access to the seventh one and the really cool thing about this card is that even if you draw the seventh one already in your hand you can actually just discard seventh ascension for something like your fateful adventure and then from there you can just use the graveyard effect anyways so even with this quote-unquote brick you can still play around and play through it so let's get into the deck profile here we are starting off with three crusadia maximus the crusadia stuff is pretty standard three crusadia draco three arborea three reclusia as well as two crusadia lannis these are like the ratios that i really like Reclusia is so so good for going second if you guys don't know it has a really cool effect where when it's special summon you can target a Crusadia card you control and a card your opponent controls and pop them both now you guys might be thinking but now you lose your Reclusia you don't have the extra body that you can link climb with yes that can be true but also a lot of times you can play around this because you have cards like Crusadia power which we play three of this card is absolutely nuts another card is Arborea as well that helps with Reclusia so let me tell you guys some rulings that you guys may not know or may not have heard of so Arborea first of all lets you protect the Crusadia monster from being destroyed so the really cool thing about this is if you go summon Reclusia, activate Reclusia, target itself, target a monster your opponent controls, then what ends up happening is you can Arborea protect your Reclusia, so your Reclusia won't die, but it'll still pop the card your opponent controls. Now with power, power says target a Crusadia monster you control, that Crusadia monster is unaffected by card effect except its own. So in this case, you would actually go Reclusia, target your Magius, target a card your opponent controls, or any Crusadia link monster I should say, but most of the time it might be Magius, could be a Regulus, doesn't really matter. But essentially you go target that, target a card your opponent controls, Goals chain power target the monster that you targeted on your side of the field so let's say it's the magius in this case you go crusadia power target magius then reclusia will still pop the card your opponent controls but your card won't get popped so the really cool thing about reclusia is it synergizes with power and arborea just so so well and you don't lose that extra body on your side of the field so yes we are playing three crusadia power this card is insane it also ensures that all your combos go through so a lot of the time if your opponent has imperm veil or something for your magius you really need your magius to resolve so crusadia power is really good in that sense then we have three parallel Ixie. this card just increases the ceiling for this deck so so high so you definitely want to be playing three of this this card is just so nuts it gives you access to a lot of the things in your extra deck like your axes monsters but it also just helps you link climb a lot which is why this card is just so so powerful then we are playing six kaijus yes we're going second we want to break a lot of monster boards and then we want to be able to otk so the best way to do that is to play kaijus they synergize so well with your eco max in this deck so you're playing three godarla and three jizukiro so the reason you're playing three godarla specifically is because barrier statue is a very real thing in plunderies so this is just the best way to out the barrier statue also another cool thing about godarla and i 
I guess Jizukiro as well, is this is 27, this is 33. So if you put it in the arrow where Equimax is pointing to, and then Equimax, and let's say attacks another monster your opponent controls, Equimax is just a lot bigger, so it helps you OTK a lot easier as well. So that's why I really like these two, but we're playing six overall. Then we're playing one change of heart. To be honest, this was the 41st card I put in the deck, but I think it just makes a lot of sense. And the reason I think change of heart makes a lot of sense is because at the end of the day, you are playing a deck that's based off of link climbing. So change of heart just uh, helps you do that. And on top of that, worst case scenario, your opponent has monster negates. You're just going to bait out the monster negates with the change of heart. And then you can continue on with your Crusadia plays. You continue on with your adventurer plays, which of course we're playing the adventurer package. Now I understand this package is kind of expensive. I think it recently has gone down in price a little bit. However, yes, I know this is expensive, but to be competitive and to make this deck as competitive as possible, this is one of the best engines because going first, it's really, really powerful, but going second, this engine is just so strong as well. So you really want to be playing this engine. We were playing three of the water enchantress, three right of our Messier, one fateful adventure, as well as one Draco back. Now Draco back is just the reason why this engine is so good going second, because just even without the Griffin or without the illegal knight, which of course we're playing one and one of each, even without these two, just having the Draco back on your token means that you get a bounce just for free just like that so that's why this card is just so insane so i really think this engine is really important in crusadia specifically because if you want to make crusadia as competitive as possible and you want to take this to like an event okay i'll just actually see an example i actually went to nationals recently and at nationals this is the exact deck that i was playing and i actually ended up going 2-0 and in my first two rounds and that was against despia and against sword soul the only reason i ended up dropping was if you guys didn't watch the vlogs which you guys should definitely watch the vlogs but i actually ended up dropping the event after going 2-0 and because i really wanted to do other things at the event i wasn't really focused on the event itself i was really focused on you know meeting jade and yuki's voice actors meeting astro phoenix's voice actors trading around playing inside events just having the entire nationals experience more than just the main event right but i do want to say like this is the exact list that i'm showing you guys that i took to the nationals and it went 2-0 against two meta decks despia and sword soul right i didn't get to play against punk maybe in further rounds i would have played against punk but in theory this deck should be able to beat punk as well because again all of the meta decks right now are all monster boards so that's why you guys can see we're not actually playing a lot of back row hate now in the side deck at the Event. I'm not showing you guys a side deck here, but in the side deck at the event, I played a bunch of back row hate because at the end of the day, your main deck deals with all the monster boards. The only thing that you can't deal with is like Eldritch or just back row boards. So your side deck is just going to be built to beat those back row boards, right? So that's just something I wanted to mention real quick. It has nothing to do with the deck profile, but I wanted to say that this profile itself performs really, really well because I actually took this to a premier event and against two meta decks at that premier event, I ended up winning, right? So that was really cool. So yeah, of course, like I said, Draco back is really, really good going second. You have a legal knight and Griffin Rider. Both of these are really good going second the legal knight as well is actually really powerful because you can activate the legal knight bounce two cards your opponent controls and then you can actually draco back back your legal knight because it'll come back to your hand so it's really really strong in that sense so illegal knight is very very powerful but uh griffin of course is also just really good as well it's in the gate for you and then like i mentioned earlier we are playing three seventh ascension as well as the one rank up magic the seventh one so i hope you guys can see when i talk about this deck profile why this synergizes so well because i think at one point actually against my sword soul matchup he put up baron chi chow uh, i don't think he had the blackout but he had baron chi chow and a couple of hand traps but the really cool thing about this deck is even when your opponent puts up the gates like that they never really see this card coming right so what ends up happening is you go change a heart and then you know they try to negate it or you go your the crusadia plays they try to negate it you go water enchantress they try to negate it because they're like okay this guy shouldn't be able to get to his brave engine then we should be good and they're like okay now let's use all our negates on these cards and then you're like okay let me just activate seventh ascension now and then you have the entire board broken because you get access to one of the craziest monsters in the extra deck yes we're not playing any hand traps in this deck but this deck can play through pretty much any board and it can just continue playing through like all these negates that your opponent puts up especially in today's format where people are really only putting up like two maybe three negates now this deck yes i will say does lose to scythe lock however here's a really cool thing about this deck if you guys are talking about the halk fibrax scythe lock stuff well when you go into your main phase you actually have to do something before your opponent can activate halk fibrax right so you can just kaiju away the halk that's why we're playing six kaijus because if your opponent puts halk fibrax so they can make tg1 the magician pop the scythe and then make the baron all you have to do is it's the start of your main phase go kaiju on the hulk now they lose their entire scythe play so the really cool thing about this deck is that it actually plays around the scythe lock because most people are not prepared for a kaiju in the main deck which of course this deck is going to do so i think this main deck is perfect i think it's really really good i want it to fit in a foolish burial as well because foolish is sometimes good with your crusadian monsters it's also good with your water enchantress it also sometimes baits out ash blossom so i wanted to play that as well but i decided to just play 41 i didn't want to play 42 so if you guys want to try the 42 you guys can try that but this was working out so so perfectly for me and then for the extra deck the extra deck is pretty self 
self-explanatory. Like you're playing three Magius, two Regulex, two Equimax. Like of course this is your OTK package, so you have to be playing these. Then you're playing one IP Mascarena, one Crusadian Knight Avermax, and then one Access Code Talker. Now Access Code and these cards over here do come up. Keep in mind sometimes if you have Equimax and Equimax isn't enough to OTK, you can just use Equimax and any other monster to go into your Access Code Talker, and then Access Code becomes 53, and then Access Code of course can help you OTK as well. Now another thing I want to mention is Equimax has a really cool effect where it's once per turn you can tribute a Crusadia or one Legacy card this card points to, and then target one face up card your opponent controls and negate its effects. So going first, it's also a really good card for you. It's just a negate, so that's really powerful. So yeah, I wouldn't change these up at all. Then we're playing one number 104. This card doesn't come up. The only reason this card comes up is because you need it to overlay with your Umbral Horror. Now I mentioned already what Umbral Horror did earlier in the video. Now this card is just so so strong, and it just helps you OTK so easily. On top of that, I didn't even mention, but it's also 3,000 attack. So this is also a big body for you. So even after your opponent tries to stop you or negate all your stuff, you just make this you have your opponent's life points you discard a card from their hand and then this is also now a 3k body for you so this card is insanely powerful then we're playing one dugaris where it only comes up in a situation where you have equimax and you don't think equimax is enough and it also comes up of course when you use your parallel exceed technically you could also do it with draco and maximus because these are both level fours as well we have baguska this card is just really really powerful if you sit on an equimax let's say with this card when you're forced to go first it does become really strong because your opponent really can't play through it your equimax is going to be a big body and this is just going to stop your opponent from doing anything really so this card is insane and then we're playing the one tornado dragon this is like the only kind of main deck kind of out to back row but yeah you're not going to be outing a lot of back row boards with this deck unfortunately however the really nice thing is in today's metagame there's actually just mostly just combo decks which means that you're not really worried about the back row decks as much and even if you do see back row decks your whole side deck is built to beat those kind of decks so you're gonna be playing red reboot and lightning storms cosmic cyclones twin twisters stuff like that you guys obviously are not gonna play every single back row hate card but i'm just saying that like, there's a lot of options for you that you can play in your side deck so that's what your side deck is gonna do overall though i love this deck i've been having so much fun with it 7th Ascension is an insane card. This card is so, so powerful. And again, I went to a premier event where, keep in mind, all these players at Nationals playing in the main event have their invites, which means they are at least competent players, right? So if I'm going 2-0 in the first two rounds, and to be honest with you, Lord knows how far I could have gone with this deck because this deck is extremely powerful. I'll actually just put up a picture of the hand that I had, I think, in game one or in round one. I can't remember exactly which this hand was, but you have hands like this, and these hands are absolutely powerful because you're breaking every board with this kind of hand. You're breaking every single board, and even if you're not OTKing, you're establishing your own board, which is really, really powerful. Keep in mind, that's a really cool thing about the adventure package as well, right? Because even if you don't OTK, you're still ending on a Griffin Rider, which is a negate, or you could still end on an Illegal Knight, which is a bounce too. So this deck is just so, so powerful going first, going second. Of course, you want to go second, but I'm just saying that this deck has so many plays. I'm really, really enjoying it. I think you guys should try it out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I wanted to show you guys how you guys can play Crusadia at a competitive level and also take advantage of how powerful 7th Ascension is. This card is insanely nuts. Going second against a lot of decks it becomes so so powerful i'm gonna be showing you guys in tomorrow's video how you guys can take advantage of this card because it's so so crazy so if you guys did enjoy this video though make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one deck profiles combos all this other good stuff it's going to be on the channel five days a week i upload for you guys here i hope you guys enjoy i appreciate every single one of you with that spank those sign it out peace